authority. So fasting is an act, an act that includes or involves separating your desires in order to make God priority. Now, in doing this, four things stand out. Number one, you must turn to the Lord because there are many persons who separate their desires but they replace it with another desire. And so because they are not eating from 6 to 3 p.m., they are watching a movie or they are going to visit a friend and they chat until time is exhausted. It's not about the time. It's actually about focusing on God. The scripture we read in Joel chapter 2 verse 12, it says to turn to God with all your heart in fasting. And so if you have not turned to the Lord, then what you are doing is actually an, an activity that has no power in the spirit. Because every time a man fasts, his focus, his attention, his consciousness must be directed to God. Number two, when a man fasts, he must be predisposed to carrying out benevolent and just acts. Because fasting is not just about waiting upon the Lord. Because when you wait upon the Lord, God impacts on your character. He impacts on your belief system. He impacts on your priorities. And one of the ways it, your priorities are demonstrated is in your relationship with others. And so Isaiah 58 verse 6, God was asking them a question. He said, this fast that you are embarking upon, is it just about wearing sackcloth, pouring ashes on your head? He said, how come you have not made it easy for those who are bearing yokes? How come you have not been, been favorably disposed to those that you interact with every day? And so fasting is actually a time of dealing with humans, demonstrating the love and the compassion of God. You can't be lifting up your hands and say you're on 21 days fast when the nanny in your house does not have food to eat. Your children eat even the leftover, the nanny is not qualified for it. You are not a Christian, you are a hypocrite. You can't claim that you are fasting for 40 days and then you show up and all your staff, you can't even pay them what is due to them. You take their money, you say you are doing an investment. And what you are paying them is so little and inconsequential. Yet, you are not troubled. You are not bothered. When we fast, God draws our attention to the character of the spirit. Number three, I said fasting is a time of humbling ourselves. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3, it says he suffered them to hunger that he may humble them. And so every time a man fasts, it provokes hunger. Fasting provokes humility. I beg your pardon. When people don't fast, Many times they'll be high-minded because they are still powered by their strength, their natural ability. When you subject yourself to fasting, apart from the fact that it has a natural impact on your physical being, it also gives God the opportunity to begin to address the tendencies and the propensities of the flesh. So fasting humbles us. Psalm 35 verse 13, the psalmist said, I humbled my soul in fasting. When you fast, you humble your soul. Every man who is committed to kingdom assignment and who is granted authority must be tested. And one area every believer is tested in is in the area of our appetites. The first specimen God presented in the Garden of Eden was tested and the test was in the area of appetite. If an apple was presented, eat, you will become as wise as God. And he said the man looked at it and saw that it, it was pleasant for food and he desired to eat of it. Even Jesus, the Son of God, was tested. If you are the Son of God, turn these stones to bread. Why did he say that? Number one, he said Jesus was hungry. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 2, he fasted for 40 days and afterwards he was unhungered. And the devil came to him and said, turn these stones to bread. And number two, he perceived that Jesus would want to prove a point in case there is pride in his spirit to demonstrate power just to validate himself. But because he subjected himself to fasting, which is an act of spiritual maturity, he could decipher the will of God and align himself to the will of God. Now, when you begin to do this, which is actually the accurate way to do it, there is a power that is engendered. And that power, I said, is the reward of fasting. And the first one we looked at in the first service is what we call called divine favor. When a man begins to fast, he begins to release a power called favor. We looked at a story in Esther chapter 4 verse 16. Israel was being threatened. The whole tribe was to be annihilated. And this verdict came from the throne of the most powerful king in the then world. There was nothing they could do. And to make things worse, this manipulation was an act of a gang up in the corridor of power. 
So there's no way they can even access the king to change the matter. The only window they had was the queen. And even the man that came to talk to the queen was hoping she would use her natural powers, like her beauty and her proximity to the king. Go to the king, touch his head, and tell him about this matter. But you see, matters of state are not settled casually. It's a law that has been passed. And to make things worse, this lady does not even have the right to go into the king until she's summoned. Because it's against the law. But there was something Esther knew. In Esther chapter 4 verse 16, he said, take a three days fast for me. And he said, I will go into the king, which is against the law. He said, if I perish, I will perish. The reason is this. If God does not do something, if she enters there, she will perish. So she knew this was not a joke. If God does not intervene, she will perish. But she understood the potency and the efficacy of fasting. God of necessity must do something. You can't change the heart of a king with your looks. He said the heart of the king is in the hands of God. He turned it. That is, to turn the heart of a king, you need something more than physical beauty. The king sees every damsel in the kingdom. And so Esther knew, I may be, I may be beautiful. I may have all the perfumery. I may have the best of garments, which is good. Please look beautiful, especially those of you who are married. But there is something beyond beauty. The Bible said when she walked in, the king looked at her and turned his staff. Come. And before she ever made the statement, that's what got me intoxicated. The king said to her, what do you want? Before she answered, the king said, anything you ask, I will give you. Before she asked, the king said, even if it is up to half of my kingdom, what power is this? What do you want? At least logic and reason demands that you wait if it's something you can do or if it's something you are willing to do. You didn't stop there. You tell her, you will answer, oh God. What is God? Are you under a spell? Yes, because favor is a spell. <laughs> favor is a spell. And instantly, a law was overturned. It's called the power of favor. Favor does three things. Number one, favor opens your heaven. Luke 135, the angel appeared to her and said, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. You are favored among women. What caused the heaven to open was not her prayer. What caused the heaven to open was not her beauty. It was not even the fact that she was a virgin. There were many virgins in Israel, but you are highly favored. Because you are favored, an angel can be mobilized. And that was not a common angel. That was a cherubim. Such angels, they don't move carelessly. They stand before God. When he came to Zacharias, he said, I am Gabriel. That standed before the throne of God. That's their designation. You don't send archangels. Archangels are participators in kingdom agenda. Because they are not just servants. They are rulers in the spirit. They are princes in Zion. The Bible said there are 12 chief princes. Gabriel is one of them. But on the strength of favor, it was not just an angel that was mobilized. It was a chief prince. This kind of angel, they can judge you, even if God didn't tell them to. Because God didn't tell Gabriel to judge Zacharias. He said, me, I brought you a word, and you doubt me, you will be done. That's a chief prince. But favor can mobilize them. Gabriel came into the world only three times in human history. They don't come anyhow. Somebody's heaven is opening this morning. <laughs> the second thing favor does is wealth transfer. It said in Exodus 12, 36, God gave favor to the Israelites and they spoiled the Egyptians. They took the wealth of Egypt by favor. Thank God for marketing. Thank God for transactions, but there's something called favor. There's a level you get to. They say, Kai, this thing is worth 10 million. But we know you will struggle to do something, so take 20. And you are wondering, why? It's favor. It's favor. It will cost money. Money. There are people money look for. And trust me, you need a lot of money if you will prosecute the affairs of life. But favor is what makes for the possibility of wealth transfer. And finally, favor commands the allegiance of men. Not just men, but even kings. That a king will be willing to serve his own subject on account of favor. What do you want? It's only favor that will make a king ask you, what do you want to only favor makes that happen. And so when a man begins to fast beyond meeting 
a time and location there's something he's generating number two power that fasting activates is the power to rule in the realms of spirits spirits control the affairs of life the earth realm is like a theater it's like a screen in the spirit realm the reoperation does not happen here it only manifests here it's like the LED screen we are watching these pictures we are seeing are a product of a, a very robust circuit system that projects the impulses that is transmitted through electric current if you assume these pictures are my son when a phone starts ringing he will rush because he's wondering how did somebody's head enter this phone and he's talking because he assumes somebody's head is inside the phone so he's checking to look at it's a complex manipulation everything happening on earth is orchestrated first in the realms of spirit and so for a man to be a ruler in the natural world he must be enthroned in the spirit realm and one of the ways you enter the corridors of power in the spirit is by fasting jesus called his disciples in luke chapter 10 and he told them go cast out demons and they went on the strength of his word, and they cast out demons and returned and they were celebrating even the devils were subject to us <laughs> and jesus didn't say anything on another occasion jesus went to pray and the same disciples went to cast out demons and the demons will not go and in matthew 17 they came to ask him why didn't the demon go and jesus told them this kind there is a this kind he said this kind goeth not but by prayer and by fasting there is a demon you will cast out because you have a revelation there's another demon that will want to find out if there is a consecration backing this your revelation because there's no consecration backing this revelation you are a talker and one of the consecrations that demons call in the spirit to find ranking men is fasting and prayer that's why when they went to paul when they went to the sons of skiba to cast out devils the guy looked at them and said jesus we know and paul we also know because in this corridor it's not only jesus that is known a man who believes in jesus and backs it up with consecration his name also becomes a scepter in the spirit realm because there is a power that god allocates to his servants he called us to co rule with him but there are consecration that makes it happen even jesus the son of god walked in and out of the temple for 30 years no demons saluted him but the bible said in matthew chapter 4 verse 1 also in luke 4 1 that he was driven to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and there he fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights in luke 4 14 when jesus was returning he said and he returned in the power of the spirit and his fame went abroad and immediately he entered the synagogue demons began to scream why have you come here the question is is that the first day he came there he has been going there for 30 years what happened jesus needed to activate the power and he took fasting to activate it in fact in matthew 4 15 he said the land of zabulon the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. That death can continue in that family until somebody rises up. Because God can be your boat, but you will sink. There are things you need to do to awaken the power of God that is on your inside. And one of the things you do to stare the power is by fasting. Many can never give themselves to consecration. They are saying if it will happen, it will happen. <laughs> That is one of the biggest deception of time. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Things are made to happen. If you don't know how to make things happen, it will never happen. Power. Power. Power to rule among spirits. Power to rule among demons. Many don't know what happens in their spirit. They just leave their spirits porous and throw anything and everything there. The physical reflects the spiritual. Have you not seen young people with a lot of flesh yet they are obese because they can't exercise their bodies you find a guy so large he can't carry a bucket of water so much flesh but no power put that guy in a gym let him lift irons for three months that flesh will be coupled it will be recoupled and that guy who was weak will suddenly come out and become a giant a macho man it's not about the flesh it's about the exercise so the power can be your spirit but it will be dormant every time we begin to fast we excavate power and suddenly you will discover that what you are looking for is not outside you it's inside you he said with joy shall ye draw out waters from the wells of salvation there is a power on your inside but it will take fasting to fetch it that's why demons mess up with people if you become volatile through fasting even the demons will advise themselves that this is not the place to be because fly only perch on cold food when you become hot there's an intelligence in the fly realm to know that if you perch here you are in trouble there are men that demons tell themselves don't go there if you even fly over that house there will be problem 
you will look, you will not walk for one month because they are too volatile. They are volatile. They are volatile. Paul said in fasting often I pray in tongues more than you all. So they, they know him in the demonic realm. If you get him angry, there'll be challenge. He knew how to walk power, 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 power. Every Christian should rule among demons. It's our first, in fact, it's one of the signs that prove that we are Christians. He said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. And so, when Christians begin to struggle with demons, it means they've not touched power. They've not touched what it takes to survive and to succeed in time. There was a time I discovered my life was in a cycle. And in 2012, the Holy Ghost advised me. He said, If you want to fulfill this destiny, better leave food alone. The greatest of us fell, either by food or by our attraction to the opposite sex. You don't leave it, you become nothing. And from 2012 to 2017, I fasted every day from morning to night. Five years before the fasting was over, I exploded. I exploded. See, there is something on your inside that the world can't contain. He said he has put eternity in our hearts. But that eternity must erupt in order to swallow the, swallow the world. And today, you have to refuse not to move around the world. You are on high demand. People say, even if it's one day, come. The Bible spoke about Moses. He had a burden to deliver Israel, but he couldn't. In fact, he thought it was about a strategy. He began with the strategy of killing the Egyptians. When the vengeance of Pharaoh rose up, nobody told him he ran away for his life. He ran into the wilderness without anybody advising him. But the point came, the Bible said, and Moses went to Horeb, the mountains of God. And at the backside of that mountain, he saw a spirit. And the spirit told him to go tell my Pharaoh, let my people go. Even though 